Hi, my name is Matthew Hansen, and today I'm presenting you my bachelor thesis, the development of a domain-specific language for controlling of a syringe pump of a pharmaceutical synthesis plant. First of all, we are going to start with a bit of motivation. Breast cancer commonly presents itself as a lump, and you can see this in the picture on the right-hand side. And it is the most common type of cancer in women and the second most common type of cancer worldwide. Without going into too much detail, the currently used method of tightening the cancer has its disadvantages. For example, the agent that carries the drug can get stuck at the periphery, which can then lead to an impeded intertumoral diffusion. The new approach is using nanobodies as an active drug carrier. These nanobodies have advantages due to this due to the small size, they can easily penetrate the tumor tissue. And for the synthesizing of these nanobodies, a syringe pump is used, which consists of three parts. First of all, we have the base unit here, which is controlling the hardware workflow. Then we have the fluid pass, which ensures the sterility of the system. And then we have the control unit, which is connected via an Ethernet cable, which is the base unit, and with which the user can control it. And the problem definition of the thesis is that during the synthesizing process, radioactive waves are emitted, and too much exposure of them can damage the body. And additionally, the control unit, which is used for the control of the base unit, has a couple of drawbacks. For example, the user cannot aspirate a precise volume if this volume lies below the maximum capacity of the used syringe. And furthermore, it is rather tedious to get, for example, a report PDF from the control unit because it is necessary to use an external USB drive. And this leads to the thesis statement, the development of the user interface, and also of the domain specific language to control the syringe pump itself. And the user can control the syringe pump either manually or automatically, manually by sending one command at a time, or automatically with the use of the domain specific, domain -specific language. And more functionality should be able to be added in the future. For example, for the user interface, that the user can configure hardware parameters and for the domain specific language, that additionally, for example, aspirating and dispensing in steps is added. Here we have a graphic of the software architecture of the syringe call control. First of all, the user is creating a command sequence. Command sequence basically consists of multiple commands put together to one sequence. This is then sent over to the multi core part of the application where the model is parsed and additionally context conditions are applied. Afterwards, the abstract syntax tree is traversed and a pretty printer template is used to create code from it. And this command code is then sent over to the application which uses the code, compiles it and sends the single commands over to the syringe pump. Here we have the user interface. It consists of three parts. First of all, we have the tabs where the user and the general tab can connect to and from the syringe. They can initialize the syringes, which means that they are prepared for use. And they can also prime the system, which means that it's cleaned. In the config tab, the user can see the currently used mode of dispensing as well as the size of the syringes. In the syringe tab, the user can add commands to the user input or they can execute them manually. And the valve tab, the user can change the physical position of the valve. Second part is the user input field here, where, as I said, the commands can be added from the syringe tab or the user can write them manually, or they can load them in. If the user wants to save the command sequence, they need to enter the name here, which serves as a versioning, and they can also save it as a PDF, which then can serve as a report. And on the right-hand side, we have a box for the display of notifications. For example, if the user has saved the file successfully, we're coming over to two examples of the domain-specific language. First of all, we have syringe operations, which are here is a flow, add and remove command. They all start with a constant and afterwards they have a name here, which is a string and represents either the left or the right syringe. And lastly, they have a natural literal. In the case of the flow, it represents the speed of acceleration, which means with which speed the syringe aspirates or dispenses fluids in microliters per second and for the add and remove command how much volume is added to the syringes. The second or second example has the loop and the delay command. The loop is used to remove redundant code repetitions. It starts with a constant loop and afterward it has the natural literal 
which represents the amount of times a loop runs through the code in the curly bracket. And then we have the delay command, which adds a delay in seconds. Now I'm going to explain the user interface as well as the domain specific language with the help of a technical walkthrough. For the user interface, we're using the model view view model pattern and thus we are dividing the files into the model, the view model, as well as the view files. Additionally, we have an event control folder for the aggregator as well as the command handler. The aggregator is used for the communication between the tabs with the main window view model. To add a new tab to the user interface, the developer needs to first of all create a view in the view folder and then they need to create an interface as well as a view model for it. In the interface they need to reference the iView model interface and then this, inter this created interface is then referenced in the main view model. And now if the user wants to add a new tab they need to add a new instance of this tab into the tab sections observable collection. To then have the tab display in the user interface, the developer needs to go into the main window view model and then into the tab control section here. Here the user needs to simply copy the data template and replace the for example, valve view model with the name of the new view model, as well as the valve view here with the name of the new view. It is also important to note that we are using a singleton class for the IP address as well as the daisy chain. Thus, it is important for new develop for the development of a new view that the developer is also referencing the IP address instance in the singleton as well as the daisy chain if they are wanting to execute functions from the API. The reason for this is due to the fact that we are always creating a new instant of the view. We are also need to we also need to connect to the syringe pump new to access the functionalities in the specific tab. Thus with the creation of a singleton we only need to connect once to the syringe pump to have access to the functionalities without needing to connect new. Now we can go over to the domain specific language and we are starting here with the grammar. As seen, the four different syringe operations, add, remove, move and flow all have their own production. It is possible to create one production for all of them since they are basically the same besides the constant and the front, but this would lead to some problems. In, for example, the pretty printer part, we would only need to override one method, but this method can become cluttered pretty fast. Because, first of all, the, so the source code we are creating is rather long, as I will show in a second. And additionally, we would always need to check the command name in the front if it's either add, remove, move, or flow instead of just going over the abstract syntax tree and handling the different nodes. And here down below we have the delay command as well as the loop. If the user now wants to add more to the grammar, they simply add it down below here. Afterwards they should validate and compile it of course and then go over to the pretty printer where they are overriding the created handle method for the corresponding now created new node and the abstract syntax tree. Here it is also important to note that if the developer has created a new production for a syringe operation that they need to check whether the syringe is either left or right because depending on this they need to target either the left pump or the right pump. And if they have added a new context condition here so simply go over to the tower control cocos file and add it to the already existing ones. Now in the tower control tool.java, the run default cocos now has the new the added context condition in it. And that's it from our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.